Give it up for day five of AP Cow Hills AB Review, where we look at Diffie Qs and slope fields. So, all right, so remember the key idea for solving a differential equation is separation of variables and initial conditions. Differential equations relate the derivative dy or dx of a function y equals f of x to the original function. All right, so if we have dy or dx equals h of x over g of y, the key is to um, separate your equation so you have something of the form g of y dy on one side and h of x dx on the other side. Most of the time this means cross multiplying both sides by dx and gy. We evaluate the indefinite integral on each side of the equation. We use the initial conditions to solve for c, the constant of, constant of integration, and we solve the resulting equation for c. Okay? So as an example, if I have dy over dx equals x squared over y, which I believe is what was on the notes when I originally wrote this up, albeit this example does not contain initial condition, okay? Um, we separate into y dy equals x squared dx. We take the antiderivatives, which gives us one half y squared equals one third x cubed plus c. Okay, and then if we had an initial condition here, we'd solve for c, although the problem doesn't provide us with one. So we'll just assume that we've solved for c. We have our value for c now. Um, and then we get y equals plus or minus, we solve for c by getting y equals plus or minus square root two thirds x cubed plus c. Remember the square root case that the plus or minus sign depends on your initial condition. So if y is initially positive, then we go with the positive sign, whereas y is initially negative, we go with the negative sign. Slope fields analysis of differential equations. So slope fields provide a method for visualizing and analyzing behaviors of solutions to differential equations without ever having to solve for the differential equation. Remember that we can get an infinite family of solutions to a differential equation depending on the initial condition. Okay. We can trace out a solution to a differential equation based on a specific initial condition. Um, so say I was looking at initial condition where I have approximately for x equals 2, y equals 1. I'd start here at x equals 2, y equals 1. And then I would trace out what's happening with my curve. We could see my curve goes backward like this. And then it'd start tracing upwards. Okay, You don't have to have the exact tracing down, but you should catch the general pattern of what's happening with your curve. Okay. Um, let me go back one I accidentally clicked here. So we can determine if our function is increasing slash decreasing over an interval. Um, we can determine concavity. We can determine end behavior of the slope field. If we're not given sl the slope field, um, we can still determine these properties by applying certain properties um, to the differential equation. Okay. So if we're, say, looking at increasing or decreasing, um, what we would do is we apply the conditions for increasing and decreasing to the differential equation. So in order to be increasing or decreasing, dy over dx um, must be greater than zero, which means x plus y must be greater than zero. So our um, solutions to our differential equation would be increasing if y is greater than negative x. So all y values above the line y equals negative y. You would do the same thing for concavity, except you would take the second derivative of this and then solve the resulting inequality. Okay? Um, if you're looking for, say, to see if your function had horizontal asymptotes, in that case, the idea is with horizontal asymptote, your graph plateaus, and thus the slope of tangent line becomes zero. So you would set dy over dx, dx equals zero and see if you can solve a corresponding equation for a y value. If you can, you have a horizontal asymptote. If you are not able to, um, so you get infinity or an imaginary value, then there are no horizontal asymptotes for your um, differential equation for your solutions to your differential equation better said. And lastly we look at exponential growth and decay. Applications of differential equations um, specifically 5.4 we'll look at in the coming section. Okay. Um, so recall that a differential equation that governs exponential growth and decay is of the form dy over dx equals k times x. Okay. I have the plus or minus thrown in here, but really it should just be k times x because the plus or minus is accounted for by whether or not k is positive or negative, which is what we solve for once we have found our solution. So really it should just be k times x, where exponential growth occurs if x is, k is greater than zero, and exponential growth, or excuse me, decay occurs if k is less than zero, okay? So, so the subsequent general solution is y equals y naught, where y naught is our initial quantity times e to the kx, again with k being greater than zero being exponential growth and k less than zero being exponential decay. Okay, um, so why not again is the initial amount. So if they give you that the initial population, initial quantity is blah blah blah, you don't have to plug that in and solve. All you need to do is just slap it in right here. Okay, 
K is what we call the growth slash decay constant. It uh, provides a numerical measure of how fast our population is growing exponentially. So the idea is to find K, you use a second point of value to find to solve for K. You can't use the initial value y at t equals zero or y at x equals zero as this removes k from the equation because we'll end up with k times zero in our equation. For radioactive decay, the half-life t1 half of materials related to the growth rate to k by the following equation, t1 half equals natural logarithm of two divided by k. Okay? Um, if you forget this equation, you can solve for the half-life by um, setting y equal to y naught divided by two and then solving the subsequent equation for um, t, or x. And that covers day five of AP Review with Differential Equations.